Okay, number one. Match each definition to the corresponding vocabulary word. First, we have a or am blank of a number is the product of that number and any whole number. Smith. Multiple. Multiple. Very good. So we need to draw a line from this box down to the box for multiple. Sorry, please make sure you're using a red pen. Not a blue pen. Last time you were using a blue pen. It needs to be a red, non-erasable non pen. I don't have a um, red pen. You have one? I've seen you use it before. And you got one at the beginning of the year. Because you cannot use an erasable pen for this. And it should be red. You got two at the beginning of the year from, from the school. Okay, Zari, well, I don't, you need to get some red pens. I don't know what happened to the ones we gave you at the beginning of the year that you have used before because I've gotten work from you that was fixed with red pen, not even that long ago. So, I don't know, okay. The next one, a number close to an exact value is a what? Kingston's not here. Zadie. An estimate. Okay, a number close to an exact value is an estimate. Okay, the next one, a number that divides a whole number evenly. Also, a number that is multiplied by another number. Aaron. A factor. Very good. And the last one, the products of each place value are found separately and then added together. Michaela. Partial products. Partial products. Remember, partial, the base word is part. So if we're finding the products of each place value separately, that means we're finding the product of part separately and then we add them together. Okay, the directions for numbers two through four say, multiply, use basic facts and patterns. So Victoria, number two, two times 60. Well, step one, we find the basic fact. What is the basic fact, Victoria? Can't hear you. Two times six. Two times six, which equals? So step two is um, solve the basic fact. Two times six equals? 12. 12. Step three is count the zeros in the factors at the end. How many zeros are at the end of our factors? One. I can't hear you. One. One. So step four, put the zeros at the end of the product. How many zeros do we move to the end of the product? One. One. So our answer, two times 60 equals? 120. 120. Okay, number three. We have nine times 600. That's me. And that's Mason. And that's Ethan. Carla, step one, find the basic fact. What is the basic fact in number three? The basic fact is nine times six. So step two, solve the basic fact. Nine times six equals? 54. 54. Step three, count the zeros at the end of the factors. How many do we have, Carla? Two. One, two. So step four, we move them to the end of the product. One, two. Our unspoken step five is to do what? Who remembers what our unspoken last step is? Carla? Our last step is to, to put the comma where it needs to go. Excellent, we put the comma where it needs to go. We know we put it every three digits. One, two, three, comma, one, and we're done. Good, so Carla, nine times 600 equals? 5,400. Very good. Okay, number four, six times 4,000. Zari, what's step one when we're using basic facts and patterns? Find the basic fact. Good, and our basic fact is? Six times four. What is step two when we're using basic facts and patterns? Solve the basic fact. So six times four equals? 24. 
Good. What is step three when we're using basic facts and patterns? Find the zeros. Where, where do we look for the zeros? In the middle of our, in our product, in our factors? In our product. In our product? Okay, well I count zero zeros in our product. What does that mean? That it can't be in the um, product. So where do we look? In, at the, at the second product, and at the second factor. But what if our first one had zeros at the end? Would we not count those? Have we talked about that yet? Do we ignore the zeros unless they're only in the second factor? Did I ever say no. we only look at the second factor? I said we look at the where? At what? The zeros. Well, I look at the factors. I never said we only look at the second one. We've just only seen where it's been in the second one. But that doesn't mean that that's the rule. The rule is, or the step three, is to count the zeros at the end of the factors. Not a specific factor, just at the end of the factors. Do we count zeros in the middle of factors? If there's a digit other than zero that comes after it, what do you think? Think about it. Would we count a zero? Like if we had 604, would we count this zero in the middle? Do you think? No, because there's a digit other than zero at the end. So we count the zeros. Step three is to count the zeros at the end of the factors. And we will see that later on. So Zari, how many zeros are at the end of our factors? Three. One, two, three. And step four is to do what? Place the, place, place the zeros at the end of your product. Put the zeros at the end of our product. Thank you guys for not saying add the zeros at the end because that would mean plus zero, plus zero, plus zero, which would still be 24. So we put them at the end of our product. One, two, three zeros. And what is the unwritten last step of everything, Zari? Put the comma every three digits. Good, we put the comma every three digits. So one, two, three, comma, one, two, no comma. So Zari, six times 4,000 equals? 24,000. 24,000, very good. Okay, so go ahead, turn to the next page. Helper number two, please sanitize, erase, sanitize. Okay, the directions for numbers five and six say estimate, round to the greatest place value. Circle whether the estimate is greater than or less than the actual product. Okay, Cullen, number five, we have six times 423. Are we ever going to round the one digit number? No. No, we, we, whenever we have a problem where we are estimating the product, which number, which factor do we always round? The bigger factor. The bigger, the greater factor. So in this case, which one is greater, six or 423? 423. 423, so six is gonna stay the same. And 423, which place are we rounding to? The hundreds. The hundreds, because that's the greatest place value. So 423 rounded to the nearest hundred is? 400. 400. Now, all we have to use to solve is what? Basic facts. Basic facts and? What did we use for numbers two through four? Basic facts and? Patterns. Patterns, because the pattern is what comes in with the zeros. So step one is what? Find the basic fact. Find the basic fact, which is? Six times four. Step two is? Step one is find the basic fact. Step two is? Can somebody help her out with step two? Zadie? Solve the basic fact. Solve the basic fact. So six times four equals? 24. 24. Step three is to? Find the zeros. Where? In our factors. Where in our factors? Beginning, middle, and? Erin, can you help her out? 
find the, not the factors at the end, but the Call it? The zeros at the end of the factors. Good. So we count the zeros. Step three is to count the zeros at the end of the factors, not at the end of the product, not in the middle of the factors, nowhere but at the end of the factors. So how many zeros do we have at the end of the factors, Cullen? Two. Two. Step four is put the uh, zeros after. The, so we put the zeros at the end of the, Michaela? Product. product. Remember, factors, product. Factors are the pieces that make up the multiplication equation. Product is the answer. So we move how many zeros to the end of our product, Colin? Two. Two. And then our unwritten last step? Is place the comma after th uh, three digits. So we place the comma every three digits. One, two, three, comma, one, nothing. So six times 400 is? 2,400. So that means the answer to six times 423 is about 2,400. Now we have to figure out, is this greater than or less than our actual product? Do we have to find our actual product to know that? No, how can we tell if our estimated answer is greater than or less than what our actual product would be? I'm going to get somebody to help you with the explaining, okay? Smith, can you explain how can we tell if our estimated product is greater than or less than our actual product without having to solve the actual product? If we rounded um, the larger factor down, the actual product would be greater. Okay, so if we had to take the larger factor and if we rounded it down, that means it's less, our estimated factor is less than our actual factor, then our answer will be, will also be less. So Colin, is our estimated factor greater than or less than our actual factor? Less. Less. So that means our estimated answer or our estimated product, 2,400, is it greater than or less than our actual product? Less. Less. Because remember, guys, you should have looked back at this so that you knew how to explain it. If you have if the estimated factor is less than the actual factor, then our estimated answer is less than the actual factor. Less, less. If the estimated factor is greater than our actual factor, then that means no matter what, our estimated answer will be greater than the actual answer. So let's look at number six, 1,987 times five. Carla, which of our factors are we rounding? 1,987 or five? We are rounding 1,987. Good. Now, are we, so which place are we going to round it to? We're going to round the thousand. The thousand. So, 1,987 rounded to the nearest thousand is what, Carla? 2,000. 2,000. Very good. And then our other factor, five, stays the same. So now, what do we use to solve this, Carla? We use, we use the, Colleen, can you help her out? We use basic facts and patterns. Do you hear it, Carla? What do we use, Carla? We use basic facts and patterns. Basic facts and patterns. So step one, find the basic fact. The basic fact is two times five. Which equals? which equals 10. Step three, we, we add this, we, 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 we put the zero with our 10. Well, how do we know how many we have? 
We get them up. We have to count. The, so step three is we have to count the zeros that are where, Carla? In our factors or our product? Factors. At the end, in the middle, at the beginning? End. End. So we have how many zeros at the end of our factors? Three. So now step four is to? Put the zero where it needs to be. Which is where? Behind 10. Behind 10, but I don't have 10 over here. Behind 10 on number six. So behind the? Product. Behind the product. So we move our one, two, three zeros to the end of our product. Do we count this zero that's already here as one, Carla? No. No. So we put on one, two, three more zeros, and then our last step, even if it's not written, is what? We need to add the comma where it needs to be. So we can, we put a comma every three digits, one, two, three, comma, one, two, no comma. Okay, now we need to say, is 10,000 our estimated answer? Is that greater than or less than our actual factor? I mean, our actual answer. Well, let's look. Is this estimated factor greater than or less than our actual factor, Carla? It is greater than. So that means our estimated answer, is it greater than or less than our actual answer? It's gonna be greater than. Good, remember, if the estimated factor is greater, then the answer will be greater. If the estimated factor is less, then the estimated product will be less because you're multiplying it by a smaller number. If you take 423 and repeat it six times, you're gonna end up with a lot more than if you take 400 and repeat it six times. If you take 1,987 and repeat it five times, you're gonna end up with a lot less than if you took 2,000 and repeated it five times, okay? Okay, number seven and eight, the directions say, draw an array or an area model to multiply. Are we drawing arrays anymore? No. Remember I said that, so nobody should have drawn an array. We're not doing arrays anymore. We are past that. You need a mute, Carla. Okay, we are past that, so we need to draw an area model to multiply. So Zadie, number seven, we have two times 15. First, we need to do what? Find a basic fact? Can we do that here? Do we find basic facts when we're doing area models, class? No. No, because we're not doing no. basic facts. We're doing partial products. So what do we do first when we draw an area model? Come on, guys. You had a whole anchor chart that you created to do this. So there's no excuse to not know how to do this. And you did two days of it. So there is zero excuse to not know how to do this. Erin. What do we do first? Draw a big rectangle. We draw a big rectangle. If you did not do this, you need to do it with a red pen right now. And go ahead and get out a separate sheet of paper because I don't want to have to search for it on your paper. Girls at home, thank you for using a separate sheet of paper. Well, two of you, I don't understand why only two of you remembered this because it's been the same rule for a very long time. Anytime you draw models, do you draw them on the paper? No, because think about how hard that makes it for me to grade, to have to search. You do it on a separate sheet of paper. Okay, Erin, what next? Make sure that you're using the, the paper correctly. Where should the holes be, on the left or the right? Yeah. Left. Okay, what do we do next? So we drew our big rectangle for two times 15. What do we do next? I split it into two. Good, with a small side on the right and a big side on the left. Not the opposite, because remember, tens are on the left, ones are on the right. Which one is smaller, tens or ones? Class? Ones. 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 Okay, now what? Not the smaller digit, because the smallest digit would be one. So do I put one here? Not the smaller digit, but the smaller. You can help her out. I put the smaller what? Sorry? 
Factor. Factor. You must use the correct vocabulary, otherwise it's going to make it a lot harder. So I put the smaller what? Put the smaller factor on the left side. I put the smaller factor on the left side. So that means I put two right here. Now what do I do? Good. So on the top, I take my larger factor, which is 15, and I write it in expanded form. What does the expanded form of 15 look like? 10 plus 5. 10. So I put 10 where? On top of the bigger side or the smaller side? The bigger side. 10. What goes above the smaller side? 5. 5. And then what do I put here to remind myself that I need to add at some point? The addition sign. I put the addition sign right above the split. Okay? What's the next step? So I multiply the factor on the side of my rectangle by the, what is this? Victoria? What do I put above my larger piece of the rectangle? Michaela? Which place goes above the larger side of my rectangle? Smith? The tens place. By the tens, which in this case is 10. I can tell you guys did not use your tools. So sad for you. Your grades will show it. Okay, Erin. So what is the answer? So first, I do 2 times 10, which equals? What's the next step? I multiply the factor on the side by the ones, which is a... What's the one? So two times five equals? Okay, now what? Am I done? No, I have my partial products, but what do I have to do with them now to solve? I add them, so, oops. 20 plus 10 equals what? 30, so that means two times 15 is 30. Now imagine having to grade all of this right here, where everything is squished in and all crowded. Is that going to be easy for me? No. It already takes me like hours to grade. Don't add to the amount of time it takes me to grade by being lazy. Please, I'm asking you. Okay, number eight. We have three times 19. Smith, what do we do first? We draw a big box on our separate sheet of paper. Good, I'm gonna do it here because, well, let's see, I'll do it over here actually. Good, so we draw a big rectangle on our separate sheet of paper because models always go where, class? Thank you, Zadie. But class, where do all models go? On a separate sheet of paper. Separate separate sheet of paper. paper. Thank you to the two of you that remembered this. Okay, Smith, what do we do next? Um, we divide the box into two. Good. And what's special about the way we divide it? Do we just divide it right in half? No. The left side is, needs to be larger than the right side. Good, because the left side represents the... Sorry, please mute yourself. The left side represents the what, Car uh, Smith? The, the tens place. Which are larger than what the right side represents, which is the? Ones place. Good. Now what? We write, we divide the larger factor into the tens and ones. Okay. You skipped a step, but that's okay. We can do these out of order. So 19 looks like what? We have to write it in expanded form. So it looks like what? 10 plus 9. And where do we write that? Above the box. Above the box. And the 10 goes above the? The larger side. The 10s piece. And the 9 goes above the? 
ones, please. And then what goes right in the middle above our split? A plus sign. Good. Okay, now what? We take the smaller factor and write it on the side. Which side, this one or this one? The left or the, the right? The left side. The left side, good. Okay, now what? We multiply three times 10. So we multiply the tens, we take our factor on the side and then multiply it by the number in the tens, which equals? 30. 30. Then we multiply the ones place. So we take good. So we take the factor on the side, which is three, multiply it by whatever's in the tens place, which is nine. Three times nine equals what, Smith? Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Okay, are we done? No. Nope, because now we need to do what with those partial products? Add thirty plus twenty-seven. And thirty plus twenty-seven, do we have to do any regrouping? No. So can we just solve it place by place? Yes. Okay, so zero plus seven equals? Seven. Three plus two equals? Five. So that means 30 plus 27 is? 57. Which means three times 19 is? 57. Very good. Okay, if you did not do those area models, you should, or you did not do them correctly, then you need to have done them on your separate sheet of paper. Okay, helper number two, please sanitize, erase, sanitize. Okay, number nine says, this is a, a word problem. Grasshoppers can jump about 20 times their length. About how far could the grasshopper below travel in two jumps? Colin, oops. Are we saying 20 times two? No. No. Why? Can you tell me why? Think about it for a second. Those are the numbers, but that's not what we're solving. Who can help her out? I want you, you guys have got to practice putting your thoughts into words. Victoria, I know that you've got the thoughts in there, so you've got to get to where you can put them into words. They're in words in your head, you just have to think what are those words and then be able to say them, okay? Victoria, why are we not doing 20 times 2? Because it says about, Love. It, because it says about how far could the grasshopper It does say about, but that's not, that's not, that's not how we know that we're not doing 20 times 2. Zari? The two jumps are showing you that it tells you it's two more jumps than what it can actually do. Okay, let's look at this problem. The question says, about how far could the grasshopper below jump, travel in two jumps? So about how far, far is our answer unit. Oops, I forgot we're not circling it. Far is our answer unit. Now, are we gonna say blank far? What does far tell us we need to look for in our problem? Smith? The distance of something. The distance, so miles, feet, inches, whatever. Then it says, could the grass grasshopper below travel in two jumps? Well, we know two jumps. Jumps is going to be our other unit. Because we're saying whatever this length is, we're repeating two times. Because they jump one length in one jump. It says they can jump about 20 times their length. And then they jump a second distance in that second jump. So we know we're looking for a distance and we're looking for a number of jumps. Grasshoppers can jump about 20 times their length. Is 20 how far they jump? Is that a distance? Is it? If they jump 20 times their length, does that tell us the distance that they jump? Does it? Come on, guys. 
I can't do it all for you. I can't. Zadie? No. No. Where do we find that length? Carla? In the picture below. In the picture. So we know a grasshopper is how long? Carla? It is four. What does CM stand for? What, Carla? It is four centigrade. What does CM stand for, Michaela? So a grasshopper is four centimeters. Does that mean our problem is four times two? Four centimeters times two jumps. Does our problem say that a grasshopper can jump its length? What is the first step to solving this problem? What is the first step to solving this problem? Victoria. Can't hear you. Why are we finding 2 times 20? We already talked about how we're not doing 2 times 20. It says a grasshopper can jump about 20 times their length. Well, how do we figure out how far that is? Zadie? Why? So that means we have to figure out, before we can figure out how far they jump in two jumps, we have to figure out how far they jump in one jump. We know that they jump 20 times their length. Well, their length is four centimeters. So first we have to solve 20 times four, which is what, Zadie? 80. 80, because basic facts and patterns tell us two times four is eight, there's one zero at the end, so that means how it jumps how, uh, 80 what? 80 centimeters. Eight or 80 centimeters. Yes, sorry. Can I go to the bathroom? In the middle of doing, go quickly, Azari, but you're gonna miss out. You needed to go before. You had all that time after you finished, you could have asked Miss Kaplan to use the restroom. You're gonna miss out. Okay, now. Is that our final answer? Does that tell us how far the grasshopper can jump in two jumps? Carla? No. Because this is what? This answer tells us what? It tells us how many the grasshopper can jump. In how many jumps? One time. One. So now we have to take those 80 centimeters and multiply it by two jumps. I can tell a lot of you probably just put 20 times two or four times two because you didn't read the whole problem. So 80 times two, we need to use basic facts and patterns. What's the basic fact? Colin. Eight times two. Which equals? 16. Now we need to count how many zeros are at the end of the factor. Which is what? Smith? One zero. And we put it at the end of our product, which means, class, how far, about how far could a grasshopper below travel in two jumps? 160 centimeters. 160 centimeters. Now, yes, it does say about, but is there any way to round these any more than they already are? No, that about just tells you it's not exactly 20 times their length. They just rounded about how, how many times their length. So it might be like 18 or 22 times their length. Or it could be different for every grasshopper, but it's about 20 times their length. Okay, that's a multi-step problem and I can tell a lot of you just picked out the numbers that they saw that you saw and just answered it without actually reading the question. Okay, number 10, there are 21 boxes of markers in the art room, in each art room. Each box holds six markers. How many markers are in two art rooms? Zari, what's our question? How many markers are in two art rooms? How many markers are in two art rooms? 
Okay, what's our answer unit? Zaria, what's our answer unit? Markers. Markers. Okay, now let's keep going. Do we have anything else that tells us in our question, just our question, do we have anything else that we know is important yet? Or that we know we need to look for yet? No. No, so let's go and reread. There are 21 boxes of markers in each art room. Well, I see 21 boxes and I see markers, but it's separated by boxes of. So do we know if 21 is important yet? No. No, but I do see a word. What word do I see in that sentence? Boxes. Do I, does boxes, do I know anything about boxes yet? No. What it's word do I each. see? Each. Each. Each tells me I'm doing what? Dividing or, mu or multiplying. Multiplying or dividing. Now, where can I find my other unit? If I have each, what do I know comes after it? Sorry. Your other unit. So what word is my other unit? Art room. Art room is my other unit. Do I have somewhere that I've read already, either in that first sentence or my question, that tells me a number of art rooms? Yes. Yes. In your in your question. Good. So what tells me the number of art rooms? How many markers are in two art rooms? So which part of that is important when it comes to art rooms? Two art rooms. Two art rooms. Okay. We saw the whole nother sentence though. Should we ignore it? And we still don't know a number of markers, right? So what do we need to do next? We need to keep on reading so we can find it. We need to keep on reading. Each box holds six markers. Well, do I see one of my units? Yes. Which one? What do I see That's important. that I know is important? Six markers. Six markers. Now, if I just stopped and said, oh, it's six times two, would I be right? No. No, because what else do I see in that sentence? Each box holds six markers. 21 boxes. Please listen to my question. What else do I see in that sentence? Each box holds six markers. Each. Each. I see it again. Do I have the same word, which tells me I'm multiplying or dividing? Do I have the same word after each? No. What word comes after this each? Box. Box. So that means how many units do I have in this problem? Three. Three, which means I need to use what to solve this problem? This is from the last chapter. Let's see who remembers or who just takes the test and forgets about it. Smith? The associative property. The associative of property. Because I know I have two art rooms, six markers, and then do I have something that tells me how many boxes, Zari? Yes. What is it? 21 boxes of markers. 21 boxes. So that means my equation is going to look like 21 times, so 21 boxes times two art rooms times six markers. There are 21 markers in each of the six boxes. And there are, I'm sorry, there are two art rooms. So in one, so there are 21 boxes of markers in each of two art rooms. Each box has six markers. So let's look. Which one of these should we solve first? Think about if you have to use repeated addition. Think about which one's going to give you, if you're going to have to do multiplication with multi-digit times 
a double digit number? Do we know how to do that yet? Normally, we pick the fact that's going to give us a basic fact. So you may say, oh, 2 times 6. I'll do that first. But 2 times 6 is what, class? 12. 12. 12. Do we know how to do 21 times 12 yet? No. So should we pick 2 times 6 to do first? No. No. Um, let's see, who had, Cullen, you had, or no, Zari, you had this problem. So which one should we probably pick first? 21 times 2. 21 times 2. So I would go to my separate sheet of paper, which most of you did not do. 21 times 2 times 6, and I'm going to solve 21 times 2 first. Well, Zari, what do I have to use to solve that? Because I don't know how to do it the regular paper and pencil way yet. So what do I have to use to solve that? Addition. I could use, I could use repeated addition. I was thinking a, um, a model, but yeah, let's go ahead and do repeated addition. So that means I add 21 how many times? Two times. So 21 plus 21 is what? 42. 42, because 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4. And then I bring down the rest of my equation. So now I have 42 times 6. Now, would it be a good idea to use repeated addition for 42 times 6, Zari? No. No, because that would take a really long time, and I might miscount how many times I added 42. Because you have to count that first problem as 2, and the rest of them as 1. So what should I use instead? Should I use base 10 blocks? No. No, because that's going to take a really long time. Because we'd have to model 42 and then repeat it six times. So what would the quickest way to do this be, Zari? Definitely not an array, because then I'd have to have 42 counters. And that's way too many. So what would the best way to solve this be? Area model. Area model. So what do I do first? Draw a big rectangle. I draw a big rectangle. Now what? Split it. How? The left side to be smaller than the right side. Like this? No. No, because the left side represents my tens and the right side, right side represents my ones. Are tens bigger or smaller than ones? Tens are bigger than ones. So that means which side should be bigger? The right. I oh. mean, the left. The left. Okay. What now? Use. What happens next? Sorry. You had a whole anchor chart that told you step by step you had two days of doing this, so you should know exactly how to do it. Who can help her out? Come on, guys. Who can help her out? What do I do next? I've got an area model. I've split it. I've got my rectangle. I split it into two pieces. My t the side representing my tens is bigger than the side representing my ones. So what do I do next? Cullen. Put the smaller digit on the left side. That would be this two. Is that what I do? Remember, digits are the pieces. Aaron, I can't hear you. I put the smaller factor. Are digits and factors the same thing, class? No. no. If you tell me the digit, then I'm going to find the smallest digit, which in this case is 2. 2 is less than any of these other digits. You have to tell me the smaller factor. You have to use the correct vocabulary, otherwise when you get to the test, you have no idea. You have to, vocabulary is important, even in math. So I'm not taking the smallest digit, I'm taking the smallest factor, which is what, Cullen? Six. And what am I doing with it? Putting it on the left side. I put it on the left side. Now what? What step is next? Then you'd break the biggest number. Specifically the biggest what? What are these called? Factor. Okay, and what do I do with it? 
Who can help her out? What do I do with my bigger factor when I'm using area models? Victoria. Into what? Who can help her out? Erin. How do I write my bigger factor? How do I write my bigger factor? We're still on the next step after putting the smaller factor on the side. In expanded form. Again, vocabulary is important. I don't write the number at the top because that might make you think you do this. Is that what you do? I don't write the number on the top because that might think, make you think you do this. Is that correct? No. I write the number at the top in what, Erin? Expanded form, which looks like what? Forty plus two. Forty goes where? On the 10 side, which is bigger, two goes where? On the, one side. On the one side, which is smaller. What do we put right above our split? Plus sign. Okay, what's the next step? Oh, so I'm gonna give somebody else a chance. What's the next? Thank you, Erin. But we've all gotta know how to use area models, not just Erin. Victoria, what's the next step? So I multiply the tens, which is my factor on the side, multiplied by the number above the tens. Now I just use basic facts and patterns. Basic facts, six times four equals patterns. How many zeros do I have at the end of the factor? So how many zeros go at the end of the product? Now what's the next step? Come on guys, we all need to use area models. I guess we're just gonna have to do another area model lesson tomorrow. It's about memorizing, don't give me those looks. It's about memorizing. If you're not gonna memorize, then I don't know what to tell you. You can use your tools. The more you use them, the easier it is to memorize them because you may not realize it, but as you're using them, you are memorizing. The more you read something, if you read something over and over and over again without even realizing it, what happens when you put it away and you have to think about what's on it? If you've read it like 15 times, once for each problem, then even once you put it away, what's gonna happen if you have to do another one, Zadie? You've already memorized it without even realizing it. If you read the same thing over and over and over again, it's gonna stick. That's just how our brains work. So if you've been using that anchor chart that we spent time doing, then you would have read it like 25 times by this point, which means it would be in your brain. But if you're not, either because your parents are like, that's too many steps, just do it this way. Or you're not because that takes too long, I don't feel like it. Well then guess what's gonna happen when, we're, when I'm trying to test you on how to do this model? Are you gonna be able to do it? Nope. Because learning the answers and learning math is not just about having the right answers. It's about knowing why the answer is right. Because if you put an answer down and you don't know why it's right, is it necessarily right? What's the next step? Carla, what's the next step? The next step is to multiply six times Two. We multiply the ones, which means we're doing six times two. We can just use basic facts. We don't have to use patterns. Six times two is what, Carla? Twelve. Okay, now what? We're not done yet. What do we have to do next? Well, like Carla, can you yourself? We will need to multiply. Carla, we're letting somebody else have a chance, okay? We're letting somebody else have a chance because we all need practice. Because what happens, I think, when one person is answering is everybody else just tunes out. So, thank you, Carla, but what comes next? We're not done yet. What do we do next? Zari. Add two, 240 plus 12. Good. Okay? So, do we have to set it up up and down? Do we have any regrouping or can we just go side to side, sorry? 
We can just go side to side. Okay, so zero plus two is? Two. Four plus one is? Five. Two plus nothing is? Two. So that means our answer is what? Two hundred, two hundred five, two, two hundred fifty two. What? Two hundred and fifty two what? We have three units, art room, boxes, markers. Is it 252 art rooms, 252 boxes, or 252 markers? Markers. It will really, really help you to do this part. But if you're not gonna do it, well, I can give it to you. I can tell you how to do it all day long. But in the end, you're the one who has to be in the moment thinking, let me do this to help myself. Yes, Sadie? I still, I still show the work and everything you just did, but I, I still got the same answer, but I did it differently. Did you do the tools that we've been, do the ways that we've been doing it, or did you just, did you use your tools? Did you use your models? Did you, do you know why you got the answer you got? So, there you go. Okay, because if you get the right answer but you don't know why, is that really helpful? It'll get you all the points, well, not all the points necessarily, but it'll get you the point for the right answer, but will it help you later on when you're doing another problem with a different number? Nope. Okay, number 11, to find the product of 2 times 200, Julia used the basic fact 2 times 2 equals 4. How many zeros should she, should she include in the product of 2 times 200? Victoria, what's the answer? Don't forget to tell me the letter and the answer. B, 2. B, 2. Because she used basic facts and patterns. So what they told us is she found the basic fact in 2 times 200, which is 2 times 2. Then she did step 2, which was solve the basic fact. 2 times 2 equals 4. We have to do step 3 and 4 for her. Well, really only step 3. Because how many zeros should she include in the product of 2 times 200? Well, we go to our factors and we count how many zeros are at the end. 1, 2. That means she will have how many zeros in her product, Victoria? Which is option B. Okay, go ahead and put those away, or um, let's see, back row, go ahead and turn those in.